Beyond Peace movement, and you, I understand you have a vigil every Thursday afternoon for years. Yes, it's been going on since 81. So who are you and why do you do this? Oh, I'm Don Edwards, man. Peace, you know, <laughs> we all want it. Yeah. So I've been doing this since about uh, okay, nice. 03. Since 03. Uh, yeah. Uh, so nine years. Yeah, miss very few, uh, very few Thursdays. And you keep coming back. Keep coming back. Some, yeah. There used to be, you know, sometimes as much as two or three hundred. And now we have down to maybe two sometimes. But uh, we've kept it going. And we've kept it going all these years. And what kind of response do you get from people? Uh, it's, it's usually pretty good. We get a lot of honks and um, uh, peace signs, peace signs. So uh, it's much different than it was, right? Right in uh, 03, I had some stuff thrown at me and a lot, lot of, uh, well, back then, you know, right after the war started. And uh, we'd get a lot of uh, traffic from David Monta. They come down, aviation down here to the freeway. So, but uh, there doesn't seem to be any animosity anymore. It's rare. It's rare anybody makes a gesture or a comment. So it's just a pleasure to be down here now, and we've all gotten to be old friends. So it's just a social thing. War can do, peace can do better. Go with that one. Can I take that one? Take it, take it. Anything war can do, peace can do better. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I've been here. But since a lot of years, I don't even remember so many years, um, because I think that war is tribal and it's insanity. And I think that to send innocent bodies to put their lives on the line is ludicrous. Uh, and I, I think that people just are so ignorant to think that wars can ever solve a problem. It just proves who's the biggest bully. So how are we going to shift from this to the kind of world you're talking about? I'm not sure. I really am not sure. I think, um, you know, we each do what we can do in the hopes that someday lightning will strike. <laughs> but what can you say? At least you know which side you are on. That is so important. And what's your name, please? Rosemary Helen Ann. Rosemary, thank you. Nice to At meet you. At least you know which side you're on, I think is really the key. Thank you. Uh, so, hello, here's another Tucson Thursday afternoon vigiler. And you are? I'm Susan Thorpe. And I've known which side I was on since the day I was born. Did you have? <laughs> Absolutely. And I don't understand the big question about it, except that Chris Mooney, that wrote for the Rolling Stones, they did a huge, big study on it. And they had conservatives on one side, liberals on the other side. And somebody should Google that if they're uncertain about what makes the difference between a progressive and a conservative. Because the conservatives are afraid of everything. They tested this with, like, you know, uh, palm sweat testing devices and heart rate monitors and on and on and on and they show uh, pictures of racially diverse communities or of women or of other countries or anyone speaking a language that's a foreign to this person and they just went nuts if they were conservative and they were fearful. So they're so frightened they want guns, they want war, they want, you know, they're fried. They're afraid of everything. And the liberals were totally, the progressives were totally embracing diversity, embracing the world. Glad to, have, glad to see people come aboard. They weren't afraid of immigration. They weren't afraid of anything. And that's what makes what side you're on. And I know what side I'm on. <laughs> so, so I'm glad you, you raised the question of immigration because here we are in Arizona the day after the, uh, the Supreme Court hearing. And uh, so I'm wondering, you know, if among other things, People don't mind your your anti-war stance because it's not as potent right now as the whole question of immigration. 
Oh, it's the same. It doesn't matter whether it's war, whether it's immigration, or whether it's what. The same 150 people, progressives in these town, are for are the pro-immigration, want to have something fixed so that people don't have to live in fear and be taken down by Homeland Security and die. Like, they, what, eight people died this last six months? Were killed, beaten to death, tasered to death by Homeland Security? I mean, it's the same people. It's the same mentality. Brute force. Afraid of everything, fighting everything, killing everything. So, so how do we persuade our friends who maybe are part of that fearful bunch? Oh, excuse me, those are not my friends. To come over, <laughs> to let go of fear and join us. You're not going to ever persuade those kind of people because they are not persuasive. They think that they know what's right. I mean, look at Romney. Look at any of them. Look at the banksters. And they are not held. They they work with impunity. They are not held accountable in any kind of way, on any level. Do you see the Homeland Security yeah, people? Do you I see the Border Patrol going, going to going to jail? No. Do you see any of the banksters going to jail? No. Do you see demonstrators getting beat by cops? Cops don't go to jail. Demonstrators go to jail. I guess. I mean, you can look on every level, all through this town, all through this country, all through this state. We live in one of the worst states in the whole world. I mean, it's just disgusting. It's depressing. It's horrid. And no, I don't think there's any change in it. And no, I don't count those people amongst my friends. And I don't say we when I talk about the shame of America doing wars. I never was for a war in my whole life. And I know we all profit from it. But we also are going down with it. It's disgusting to have that many war-wounded people coming back home and they don't take care of them. You know, it's just like the abortion issue. No, we can't have any children. You know, women can't have pro-choice. But all these children get born and then they're not taken care of. All these people are sent off to war and then they aren't taken care of. The DREAM Act is tied to sending people to war. I mean, you know, it's disgusting on every level. And it's the same thing over and over and over and over, generation after generation. Generation and decade after decade, all my life, we've been fighting the same problems, and it just doesn't fit. But you keep on fighting the. Good oh, I'll fight, fight till I die. Oh, right. I, no, I don't have any hope that it's going to change. We got too many conservatives amongst us. You're here at the vigil. How come? Well, I've been active in the peace movement as long as I can remember. <laughs> well, almost as long as I can remember. Certainly, uh, before before the Vietnam War. That's a long time ago. And for a while, I began to call Washington, D.C., my second city. Uh -huh. We were always demonstrating. I belonged to Women Strike for Peace and worked with them for years. And that's just going on and on. And I expect I'll be here until I drop dead. I hope I don't drop dead here. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you're going to hang in. I intend to hang in. Yes, you do. Yes. Thanks. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> no, except that I wish there were more people that felt like we feel and are willing to more or less put their bodies on the line with their arms, which is sad. And I don't know how to to move them to doing things. Well, when the crack opens and we see a way, we'll do it. Well, resist imperialism and occupation now. And you are? I'm Frank Jones. Hi, Frank. So, Frank, you're here at the Tucson Vigil that happens every Thursday afternoon. How okay. come? Well, I think it's real important that the uh, alternative ideas get put out about how to deal with conflicts as opposed to war. And it, so that's why I'm here. I, I'm not much of a talker. You could probably pass on. I'm Brian. I'm here most Thursdays for about the last 10 years, but this has been going on since 82 or 83. When 81. It was 81, okay, there you have it. Um, you should probably interview the gentleman in the red cap. Yeah, he, he's, he, he's more of a historian. Um, it was original, originally for, um, uh, oh, what's that group? Help me out. The 
John Fife and those people. Uh, Veterans for Peace? No, 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 John Fife, the Reverend. Oh. Uh, the, um, I want to say Samaritans, but it's not. It was the, when the sanctuary, there was, thank you. Yeah, it was the sanctuary movement uh, when refugees were coming to this country and they weren't allowed. And since then it's turned into a general uh, anti-war uh, protest or vigil once a week. And it's been going on continuously every Thursday uh, in front of the federal building, of course, because uh, they're in charge of the, the wars and the border. So, since 1981, so you've gone through the sanctuary movement, the first Gulf War, oh, sure. second Gulf War, all the reactions to 2000. In fact, um, yeah, the, the second Gulf War, uh, after 9-11, when uh, Bush was just building up troops in the Middle East, and it looked like there was going to be a war. There were 3,000 people here the day that the war actually started, uh, and we had quite a few big marches, um, organized mostly by these folks uh, uh, prior to the war, just prior to the war, to the beginning of the war, and that was uh, 2002. No, 2003, I think. His shock March and awe didn't start until... March 19th, 2003. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think brought people out then, and what do you think led them to drift away? Oh, well, uh, of course, when, when war is suddenly in the headlines, uh, more people hear of it and will come down and protest. Um, people have gotten tired because it's it's turned into a hundred years war uh, it seems to be diminishing but people are getting tired and also if you look at the average age here uh, uh, you know uh, populations die off <laughs> so the protesters are getting older and there aren't many young people uh, they're they're too busy trying to find jobs in the economy uh, most of them that would be my guess. People are just tired and they're uh, scared of the economy and they see nothing's changing. Is there anything in Tucson that's bringing people out to demonstrate these days? Um, there's a lot. Um, most recently when there was a fear that another war would be starting in the Middle East with uh, Persia, I mean with Iran. Uh, there were probably a lot more people here three or four months ago. Uh, and the war talk has subsided, so again, the, the protests have subsided also. But I think it's a, it's a general malaise. A lot of people just feel that protesting doesn't do any good. I mean, we haven't prevented any wars. Uh, all we're really doing is venting. Uh, so you people have aware. what was the just honk for a free speech? Well, that's just because it was an available reason? sign. I also have a a no war, a peace sign, <laughs> and a, a no war sign, and uh, we are the 99 percent sign, depending on uh, which rallies. <laughs> but there, I thought a, an audience participation sign is usually the best. Free speech is popular, and, and Susan got the sign that said uh, "Honk for No War." So I have the honk free speech sign. Thank you. You bet. Positive message offering an alternative. My name is Mary DeCamp, and um, I join every rally and protest and civic engagement opportunity I can. Um, I, I 
ran for mayor on the Green Party ticket the last time through. Um, I'm a member of Code Pink, Women for Peace. Are you excellent? Excellent. Um, I'm an uh, active member of Occupy Tucson. I'm looking for every avenue to engage people, to lure them away from their televisions, out of their homes, and more face-to-face -face interaction, getting people involved. So, so what's happening with Occupy Tucson these days? We have office space. Well, wow. We just rented an office in the historic Y building um, on 735 North 5th Avenue. So we've got office space that they can't evict us from where we can actually get together and get work done. Excellent. Yes, Excellent. I'm yes. real happy about that. I'm also a member of the Tucson Peace Center and Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. So looking for coalition building, trying to identify who our movers and shakers are in the community and coordinate their actions so that we are a true movement, that we're not just isolated actors, but we're working in concert. Anything else you want to say? Love and peace. Boy, it starts with us individually and spreads out from there. So, um, keeping love and compassion in my heart. What, what do you think? I mean, you know, everybody was so excited and really emboldened by Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. And what, what I take happened is the winter, and we sort of did what our trees in New England do in the winter. You know, we just sort of deepen the roots. Back, really very active. I mean, there was a great action. It was part of in Grand Central Station last yes. Saturday. We had a melt in, and, um, and there were people. And it was primarily around nuclear power because we have these ancient nuclear Fukushima. power plants that are right in Fukushima waiting to happen. Yep. Yep. And so, so I'm curious about Occupy here and the connection between community and students. We're working on that. In fact, we just had a discussion about how to engage the neighborhoods, how to get students involved. You know, the um, fight for Mexican-American studies has been really strong here in Tucson. And we've, we've just been continually slapped down by the authorities, um, whether it is um, Troy Davis or Trayvon Martin or Bradley Manning. Um, th there has been a backlash against free speech and um, Occupy is doing what we can to bring awareness, to build that sense of community, to connect people face to face, to give them hope and things to work for. Going up to Phoenix to unite against the war on women. Uh, May 1st, we have an all day action where workers of the world unite. Um, May 3rd, there's another action. May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, we're going to have uh, an open house for Occupy. Our working groups continue to meet regularly to advance the agenda. Um, what else do we have coming up? Oh, uh, uh, Medea Benjamin has written a book on drone warfare. We're trying to get her to come visit here in Tucson. Uh, Tucson chapter of Code Pink is the custodian of the Code Pink Peace Ribbon. Really? So we're putting that up. We're, we're looking for venues to get that out. Adorable. Oh, you can get his photo taken. Yeah. What are you saying? So are you, are you said being So people don't don't care about the vigil. They care about the dog. <laughs> well, I care. And what did you call it? I call it, it dog bait. The, the, oh, the okay. dog bait. He's yeah. the dog bait. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, 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 so is he what drove uh, you to, uh, to come join this vigil? Well, I don't join this. I just walk past it every Thursday on my way from my office to the car. Uh huh. So if somebody just drives by, they say. Oh, there's an additional person there this week. They probably think so. so no, they, no, they would think it every Thursday because I'm here every Thursday.
Wednesday too. So the dog bait works. Yes, definitely. You're, you're here. We just finished another Thursday afternoon peace vigil in uh, Tucson, and you were just telling me that you've been here with two. To tell me about that. In this place? Oh, yeah. I've been here with two people, and I've been here with 1,400 during the Gulf War, the first Gulf War. But this vigil's been going on since 1981, and it's a vigil to against U.S. foreign intervention. Originally, it had to do with with uh, Central America, you know, U.S. involvement in Central America, and it was a little more religious. We used to do something religious, and uh, I started coming probably in the mid '80s, and. Uh, at some point, we, we defined it as against U.S. foreign and military intervention. And it's been going on forever, and it grows, and it gets smaller, and and every Thursday, including Thanksgivings and Christmases, and, and every day. But it's it's only one aspect of the peace movement. Uh -huh. A small aspect. Yeah. So what, what other ones are you involved in? Well, I, I, I work with the Tucson Peace Center, which is really more of a network. And I've been working with them for a long time. But for many years, we had a coalition called Tucson Peace Action Coalition. And it's kind of not active right now. But that was a coalition that brought together many organizations in town to oppose. We, we, we came together around uh, uh, the war in Kosovo. To try to stop that war, wow. and we 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 were very active until two three years ago, and uh, and we were particularly big during the build up to this war in Iraq, and we had big huge demonstrations, uh, as many you know thousands and thousands of people that we sponsored, and uh, as many as forty organizations co-sponsoring. It sounds like one of the things you all do here that I'm, I'm really impressed by is not only looking at the foreign intervention, but looking at what's happening with the uh, the local issues of immigration and uh, and the, the whole books and yeah. the discounting of that important course. We have at least a dozen, probably more like 20 organizations that work on immigration justice issues. Some of them work. Uh, a lot of it to work to defending immigrants living in this country, you know, working for the DREAM Act, working for legislation. But we live with this horror of, of people dying every day in the desert. And we're going into the summer, and every day they find bodies, and, and so many bodies they don't find because people crawl under a bush to be in the shade or get away from the sun, and, and you never find the bodies. And, and that horror brings about lots of work, and, and like a lot of the churches that used to be, you know, like a church will have a social justice group that works on peace issues. Almost all those church groups work on on, on border justice issues and immigrant issues. So, so, you know, we have that. But we have a history of it. Tucson is the birthplace of sanctuary movement during during the 80s. It was born here at Southside Church just a mile from here. And, and we've had to... Uh, uh, what we call the Presbyterian Popes from Tucson in the last 20 years, uh, the, the leaders of the Presbyterian Church in the United States, in North America. So, you know, we have that history of, of working on immigration issues. Very, very important. We had a huge demonstration uh, last night at the state building across the street. So we do a lot of that kind of work in Tucson. And, and you know, there's, Tucson's a very progressive city. So we, we work on a lot of social justice issues. Parking. No. Be the ghetto of Palestine, Gaza, and the West Bank. So here you are, Friday afternoon vigil in Tucson. Uh, who are you, and what in the world are you doing here? My name's Tom, and I've just I've lived in Tucson all my life. I I'm here because I want Israel to continue to exist. And if Israel continues behaving the way it is, I don't think they're going to. I think some idiot will eventually set off a nuclear weapon over there and wipe out the entire Middle East, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm trying to tell Israel to behave itself. So you've been protesting here, I understand, since 2001. I haven't been here all that time, but yeah. yeah. And. Do you, do you find that people are listening to you? Or do, are, you are you making a dent? I base it on the number of people that react to us as the cars go by. 
I think right after right after the invasion of Iraq, it was about 50% of the people were in favor of us and 50% against us. But normally it's more like 10 to 1 in favor of us. How? You know, we get a, a major reaction from the people yeah. that way. Yeah. So, so what ideas do you have about how, how to remind? I mean, I, you know, you're the second person, third person actually in this vigil, who has been supportive, who has spoken out in favor of Israel surviving. Oh, yeah. And oftentimes, I don't hear that. I hear people are so angry about what Israel is doing. It's not necessarily that they don't want Israel to survive. Yeah. It's just that's not part of the discourse. And uh, so I'm, I'm struck by the three of you saying this. And um, and I'm wondering how, how that came to be. That That's one of the first things you've each said. I think in my case it probably came from my mother. She was German and had left Germany in 1929 because her mother could see Hitler coming. And she worked in New York to try to rescue Jews, to allow them legal entry into the United States, essentially. So I remember her being really happy when Israel was, became a state. And I still remember some of that joy. And I'd like it to be back again. Yeah. That's, that's a fascinating story. Your mother was not Jewish, it seems, but she had a conscience mm -hmm. and, uh, and also had a, a, the smarts to say, I've got to get, if we can, let us get out of Germany. We can't support what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. She could, her mother could see it. She could see it. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you're uh, from a good line of seers. I guess. Yeah. So, but what do you think? You think most people are are listening to both the the, the right of the right of Jews to have security, the right of Palestinians, Arabs to have security. I'm afraid that most people are only listening to their own side right now, okay. just like the Congress. Peace. They should have shalom on that. And you said it says it all. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Uh -huh. Tell me your name. Gretchen, G-R-E-T-C-H-E-N-D. Gretchen, you're wearing one of these We Will Not Be Silent t-shirts. That's right. So Gretchen, you're here with the uh, the Women in Black protest. Yes, that's and, right. Uh, how come? Well, because I believe in the cause very sincerely. I think we've got to end the occupation. And uh, I just feel really good standing here with my friends. It's, uh, I think it's a worthy thing to do. Somebody just came by and said, nobody pays any attention to your signs. And that struck me as so strange because he was obviously <laughs> paying attention to our signs. So, you know, it's kind of, uh, it has its lighter side as well as, as well as its very serious purpose. So it's one of the things I do. Well, Gretchen, thank you so much. And what's sure. the sign you're carrying today? War is... <laughs>